Welcome back to another episode of Out Loud Geek, where we discuss news and views about pop culture, science fiction, fantasy, food, cooking, the outdoors, and more. Whether or not you like the trailer for the upcoming Star Wars Disney Plus show, The Acolyte, there is one indisputable fact. The vast majority of those who have rated the trailer don't like it. But before proceeding, I'd like to ask everyone to please like this video, please subscribe to this channel, and please press the bell to receive notifications. Thanks! When I reviewed the trailer for The Acolyte in a video that I had released last week, in which I also talked about how George Lucas had endorsed Bob Iger and the existing Disney Board of Directors in its proxy fight against Nelson Peltz of Treon Partners, there was only one thing in that entire trailer that I actually found interesting, which was the spinning red lightsaber cutting through the trees towards the end of it. Beyond that, much of what I saw in the trailer I described as being generic Republic-era Star Wars, though I would preface that now by saying that the outfit that Amanda Stenberg wears, often with a pandemic-era black cloth face mask covering her mouth and nose, looks like something that anyone could cobble together by visiting used clothing stores. In other words, nothing that Stenberg wore actually looked like it belonged in the Star Wars universe. And given the overall blandness of what was shown in the trailer with no recognizable well-known characters, unsurprisingly, an increasing number of people who are rating the trailer are giving it a dislike. So much so that as of the time that I am recording this video, the trailer for The Acolyte has been disliked more than 550,000 times, while it has only been liked 180,000 times. And by the time this video is posted and you are watching it, the total number of dislikes is probably going to be even higher than 550,000. And guess what? People have just as much right to not like something as people who do like it. And just because people don't like something doesn't make them ists or phobes either. There are a variety of reasons why most people don't like the trailer for The Acolyte, and I cited several things that make it unlikable that have nothing to do with the show's wokeness. So for anyone who is planning to criticize me for posting a video that highlights the growing number of dislikes for The Acolyte trailer, that's not going to change the fact that most people don't like it. If more people had liked the trailer than disliked it, then that's what I would report. But that's not what's happening, and I am reporting the fact that three times as many people have currently disliked it than have liked it. So yes, as of the time that I am recording this video, the ratio of dislikes to likes for the trailer is around a 3 to 1 ratio against it, which in my own opinion is an indictment not only against the show's creator, Harvey Weinstein's former personal assistant Leslie Headland, but also against the president of Lucasfilm, Kathleen Kennedy. And it's now a much higher ratio than when I posted a short a few days ago to report when it was only a 2 to 1 margin against the trailer. Had Lucasfilm tried to create a show based on the High Republic era books that hardly anyone has read, in an effort to increase interest in the era and the books, that may have had a more positive outcome. But the sole intent of The Acolyte appears to be for Leslie Hedlund to push woke identity politics. And the reason that I'm saying that is because Hedlund said that she created the main character of the show specifically with Amanda Stenberg in mind, as described in a February article from The Dork Side in which Stenberg said, quote, All of the artwork was conceptualized with my face, and Leslie was like, So I've been working on this for about three or four years for you. I don't know what I'm going to do if you don't do it. No pressure. So I was sent to the moon, of course, unquote. And why is that significant? Let's see what this 2017 article in Teen Vogue wrote about Amanda Stenberg and her sexuality. Amanda Stenberg may only be 18 years old, but what the actor has to say about gender is wise beyond those teenage years. Amandla, who identifies as non-binary, recently opened up about thoughts on gender identity in People's Most Beautiful People issue. Quote, gender can be pretty much whatever you want it to be, unquote, Amanda told the magazine. Quote, I tend to believe that gender as we've set it up in current day society doesn't actually exist, unquote. 
For Amandla specifically, that means eschewing the use of female pronouns for the gender-neutral they-slash-them. Sounds a lot like Ezra Miller, doesn't it? It also demonstrates the prevailing far-left woke identity politics ideology that permeates all aspects of Disney and Lucasfilm that also ultimately led to actress Gina Carano being unceremoniously fired via social media in 2021 after refusing to list pronouns in her private social media account. And Leslie Headland is specifically mentioned in Gina Carano's recent wrongful termination lawsuit against Disney and Lucasfilm, as I had talked about in a video that I had released on February 6th. Leslie Headland, who is lesbian, specifically wrote the main character in The Acolyte for Amanda Stenberg to portray, and in all likelihood, everything that I just described about Stenberg is why because that 2017 Teen Vogue article that I quoted was published long before Headland started working on The Acolyte. Further, actress Jodie Turner-Smith... Yes, yes! ...has said that she loved being part of The Acolyte because it's a female-centric show. As I had originally said in a video that I had released last year, I said that the Star Wars franchise is dead and I wasn't the first person to have said that. And the rationale for that claim is based on a franchise's profitability. When a franchise is no longer self-sustaining because it can no longer attract enough people to pay for new content being released for it, then that franchise is indeed dead. The Star Wars franchise stopped being self-sustaining within the past few years as demonstrated by the following. The box office failure of the 2018 movie Solo A Star Wars Story, which was the first Star Wars movie to flop in theaters, the declining interest in the sequel trilogy movies that resulted in Episode 9, The Rise of Palpatine, making less money domestically than Rogue One A Star Wars Story, and barely making more than Rogue One did globally. The complete failure of the overpriced Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel at Disney World that was permanently closed as of September of 2023, after opening only 18 months earlier in March of 2022, and it featured characters from the sequel trilogy. The very poor sales for the High Republic novels that The Acolyte is partially based on, and the failure of the following Star Wars shows on Disney+, Plus: The Book of Boba Fett, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and or the third season of The Mandalorian and Ahsoka. And speaking of Dave Filoni's Ahsoka series, while it had some visually interesting moments and some intermittently interesting story elements, it was mostly boring and is currently the least viewed Star Wars series on Disney+. The Acolyte will undoubtedly replace Ahsoka for the bottom spot by being even less viewed due to its obvious woke messaging, its generic Republic-era feel, and the fact that it has no recognizable characters to attract people who are even remotely familiar with Star Wars. Where's Yoda? He's nowhere to be seen in the trailer, and I highly doubt that he's even in this female-centric show. So is it any wonder why so many people are disliking the trailer for The Acolyte? No, not at all. It's exactly what I expected would happen. Thanks for watching today, and a huge thanks to everyone who has subscribed to our channel. We appreciate your support. If you enjoyed this video, please press the like button, and please feel free to share a comment. If you'd like to help support this channel, please press the red subscribe button, and please press the bell to receive notifications for new content. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, Threads, and Twitter by clicking on the links in the description. Until next time, this is Out Loud Geek.